I'll never fully understand my wife. <laughs> she is a very complex person. She is a woman of mystery and intrigue. So I observe her, and I have noticed she eats exactly the same thing for breakfast every day. So I can observe and deduce from that, this is a person who highly values consistency. She must want everything to be the same all the time. That must be the case. But then I've noticed, every time she comes home from getting her nails done, different color. So I deduce from that, oh, this is a person who doesn't like consistency. She highly values variety. So which is it, variety or consistency? Yes. That is right. And she has told me, she likes it when I study her and try to figure her out. And, you know, it's, it's difficult because sometimes, you know, there's, there are changes, things that maybe she used to value. She does. But I, I, I like to try to figure out what would she, what would she like in, this, in a situation. Or, like, what, what would she like for her birthday? Birthday's coming up. I'm already stressing over it. Oh, my goodness. Every fall, what am I going to get her? And uh, she, but she has said she likes it when I, when I study her, when I try to, when I try to figure it out. I often don't get it right, so I have learned to save my receipts, um, but I, I think that even in the trying, she receives it as a demonstration of my love. You know, I'm, I, I, want to, I want to figure out what would please her, what would bless her, and you know what? God is even more complex than my wife, and he too loves it. When we study him, when we spend time with him, when we look at his word, when we try to figure out what would bless God, what would he like in this situation? And God has been revealing himself for thousands of years to us. And it seems like uh, when you read the Bible, you realize, wow, for a season, God revealed this certain thing about himself. In another season, and then God began to reveal, reveal more about himself. And the, the reason that you and I love to be loved and we, we want to be known is because God does. God wants to be known. God wants to be loved in the same way that he knows us and he loves us. He wants to be known. God has revealed many, many things about himself, but he's not revealed everything. So God wants us to press in, and he wants you to press in and, and begin to, to, to understand who, what he's like, what he desires, what would bless him. Deuteronomy 29, 29 says that God has revealed a lot about himself, and he wants, he wants us to know about him, but there are some things God has not even yet revealed about himself. He is complex. He is infinite. But you're trying to know him, you're trying to understand him, blesses him. It's a demonstration of your love for him. God wants you and I to worship him the way he really is, not the way that you or I assume he is. Because frankly, we make a lot of false assumptions about people about situations, and about God. And he wants us to know what he is like, who he is, and, and he enjoys it when you get to know him. So we are very intentionally this fall starting what we think is a short series, although we never know, for a few weeks, where we just look at the question, who is God? Who is God? I know that if you look at the, what the media says or what the internet says, they have an opinion about who is God. Is that the truth, though? Who is God really? And so we're, we're going we're gonna to look at the Bible together and try to figure this out, at least try to understand him more, know him better, love him more. So God is infinite. You know what that means? Like, He's vast. He goes on forever. He is infinite. And if you or I ever think, wow, you totally know everything about God, I'm just going to tell you, you don't. Because if you did, in order to know everything about someone or something, that person would need to be limited. 
If something is limited, then perhaps you could know everything about that thing, a car or uh, a furnace or just or whatever, something. But God is infinite, so we will never know everything about him. But we're going to press in. We're going to see what he's revealed to us in his word and through Jesus. We're going we're to look at that and try to, to see God who, how he really is, who he's really, uh, who, who, he, who he is. So we want, we want to look at questions like, what is God like? What is his nature? How does God speak to you and me? Who is our heavenly father? Who is Jesus? Who is the Holy Spirit? How do they relate to each other? How do they relate to us, to you? And so I hope that this series will stir up in you a desire to know God better. I hope it will stir up in you a desire to worship God more fully for who he really is and how he really is. I hope this this series will stir up in you a desire to just honor God with your whole being because he is worthy of honor, worship, love, and praise. Amen. So will you, will you come with me today? You're here. You're on. You're here for the first day of this series. That's a great time to be together. Would you just set aside these next few Sundays to press in with me and with us to to be to find out who is God? Who is God? Let's find out for ourselves. Let's not take it on gossip. Let's not take it from anybody else. But let's go to the source and find out who God is. So just just a little bit of a some laying some groundwork here. God exists differently than you or I do. He exists differently than you or I do. God is spirit. God is spirit. So God is not limited to time and space. So I hope already I am stretching your mind a little bit. God is not us. He is not you. He is not me. He he is higher than us. And because God is spirit, he is present everywhere. There is nowhere you can go where God is not there. I love Psalm 139, and he just says, if I go deep, God is there. If I go high, God is there. If I go low, God is there. If I go over this way, God is there. God is everywhere. And that's one of those things that makes him different than us. He has no space limitations. Praise God. Praise God. We had some friends uh, that were out of the country for a few weeks, and we were talking to God for them. We were praying for them and for the situation in their family. And you know what? God was there with them, and he answered our prayers. God was here with us. God is everywhere. And that is, that is super cool. And this is not even my topic today. Just kind, of, just, just kind of wetting your whistle here a little bit. God is eternal. God is eternal. I've got scriptures for every one of these, but I just, I I know I don't have time to to read them all right now. But when you think of eternity, it's not just that it's a long, long time. It's not just that, uh, like, once God was born, he lived for a long time. God always was. He always was, he is, and he always will be. He, and that's, that's different than, than you and I. I love uh, what James White, an author, wrote. Eternity is a way of existing that does not involve a progression of events and moments. That's how God lives. So in other words, it's not like God says, oh, I'll get up today, uh, I'll wake up and kind of start a new day. God always is. Jesus said, my father is always working and I am always working too. God is always there. It's not like he's waiting for something to happen. He's outside of time. He is everywhere. He has no limitations. It's amazing who God is and how God is. He is in fact, I don't know if you noticed, there was a word that went, went by, it was repeated a couple times in one of the worship songs we sang earlier. And if you, if you saw that word, you might have gone, what is that? It, it wasn't an English word. It was a Hebrew word. And the word was, you know what it was? Did you notice it on the slides? What was it? Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh, we sang. 
Yahweh is the name that when, when Moses said, I got to know your name, God said, just, just know this, I am. And, and as the verses go on, he said, just call me Yahweh. It's a name that's built from the, that word, I am. God just is. He is self-existent. You and I would not exist had our parents not gotten together. God exists outside of anyone else's help. He was before it all. He'll be after it all. God just simply is. And that, so when we say Yahweh, we, we, are, we are using the covenant name of God. We're, 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 we are saying to him, you are the God who always is. You are outside of time. You are God and I am not. We worship you. And I love, I've been, I've been using that name to, to talk to God more lately. I just love what's in that name. It's such a great name. God just simply is. And so God never changes. That's pretty cool. The Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. James 1.17 says God never shifts, never changes. He is unchanging. So just to recap, God exists differently than you and I. He is spirit. He is everywhere. He's eternal. He's unchangeable. So all those things are amazing about God, and all those things are different than you or I, than humanity uh, but I, I want to press in and look at something specific about God that is, it, it is amazing, it is mysterious, it's confusing, but it's so cool. And God has revealed a lot about himself, and so we're, we're going to just focus today on one aspect, and it is a very important thing about God to understand, and yet it is completely impossible for the human mind to understand it. And uh, it is this mystery. God is three in one. God is three in one. I heard at least one amen out there, and I saw some nodding heads that you, you've heard about this before. We use a, a word that is, uh, I believe it's not in the Bible, but it's a word that describes what God has revealed to us about himself, Trinity. You could think of it as triunity. God is three in one. So we're going to explore that today, try to figure out a little bit more what does that mean? What does that mean about God? What does that mean about the way he relates to you and me? And then in the coming weeks, we plan to look at each member of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. For some of you, this, um, you've heard these terms before but you don't really know what they mean. Uh, for, for some of you, you're just getting to know God, and I'm so glad that you're here for this series. This is a great time because God is the one that we, we, we've got to know, we want to know. So we're going to look at the Trinity today, and I'm going to be bouncing all over uh, scriptures uh, I've, I've, got a, I've got a ton of scriptures for you today, and I love it. I want to encourage you to, to get out your Bible. Uh, I, I'm not going to necessarily stay at one place for a long time, but I'm going to start with Deuteronomy 6, well, one of the first books of the Bible, Deuteronomy 6, verse 4 to 5. Uh, and I encourage you to take some notes. Take some notes on your phone. Uh, what, do you, what, what notes would you take? Well, I, this is what I would recommend. It's probably the most effective thing. When, when I talk about uh, just a, a, a point, when I talk about a certain aspect of God for a while, just summarize in a few words, what, what, what is it that you're hearing? Uh, that, that, and then in the writing of that, in the, in the typing of that, there's something that happens. It, it, just, it just becomes more a part of you. So I, I encourage you to take notes. I encourage you to have your Bible out. So here, here's the, the first truth about the Trinity. There's only one true God. There's only one true God. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 to 5 says this. Listen, O Israel. This was God's people long ago. The Lord, and by the way, if you're using the NLT, which is what we, we generally read out of here, and uh, some other translations will do this as well, you'll notice many times in the Old Testament it says the Lord in lower, ca in small capitals. So L-O-R-D, it doesn't show it on, on our slide, but in, in the Bible, L-O-R-D is all capitals. 
small capitals, cap, b- bigger capital L, O-R-D. That is a signal they're telling you. The, the word behind that, this is in English, but the word behind that is Yahweh. Yahweh. Listen to Israel. Yahweh is our God, the Lord alone. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. And there are, there are many other verses in the Bible that talk about this, but I just chose this one. This is just a great verse. The Lord Yahweh is our God, the Lord alone. So there is only one ultimate being, creator of the world, savior, sustainer, friend, healer, one transcendent being, God. God is not made up of different parts. You can't chop God up and say, well, this part of God's over here. He is indivisible. He, he, he is God. And this, this affects everything. And it's such an important truth for us to know today that there is only one true God. He is the highest of the high. So this affects how we pray to God how we talk to him. This affects how we worship. This affects why we worship. You know, there's a lot of worship that goes on every Sunday during football season. There's worship of those players, worship of those teams. Uh, Probably for some, there's a little bit of worship of those cheerleaders. There There is a lot of worshiping that goes on. But there is only one who is worthy of worship, and that is our God, the one true God. We have lots of heroes. Boy, the, the singers get the Grammys, and the actors get the Oscars, and there, there's trophies. There's a lot of heroes. There's a lot of people we put up on a pedestal in life, but you know what? They come and go. Many times, like, like uh, it, it's kind of interesting to me, recently there was a, a, um, a, a new school went up in our city in Auburn, and the community was allowed to offer names uh, for the school, like name that school, name that elementary school. And I noticed in the rules, it said, we're not naming it after any person unless they're dead. Why would that be? Because heroes fail. And we don't want to name a school after someone who's been great for a long, long time, and then their life turns south. So there's a lot of heroes in our lives, but there's only one hero worth our worship, and that is God Almighty, the one true God. There's only one eternal God. This also helps us understand, this might be a newsflash for some of you, all roads don't lead to heaven. I've heard this this lie. It doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. That is hogwash. That is rubbish. That is ridiculous. Of course it matters what you believe. It matters who you put your faith in. Absolutely it does. Sincerity is not going to get you to heaven. Faith in Jesus Christ is going to get you to heaven. (laughs) Ephesians chapter 4, verses 5 to 6 says, There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all, in all, and living through all. It's just very important that we know this. This is not like our opinion. This is what God has said about himself through his word. And uh, he's our creator. He's our sustainer. He's our savior. We listen to what he says. And we take what he says about, uh, about, about God and, and life and the, the, the life to come more than our opinions, which come and go. God sees the, sees the big picture. So there's only one true God. So far, I bet we're all like, oh, yeah, I, 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 I get that. Like, that totally makes sense to me. But here's the catch. The one true God exists in three persons. The one true God exists in three persons. I remember uh, a friend of mine invited me when I was, when I was a kid to go to a non-Christian church. And I don't know why this happened on this day, but there was like a Sunday school class or something where all the kids were, and I was with my friend, and they were going through like a worksheet thing. And there was a multiple choice question, who is God? 
And the choices, I, I only remember two of the, I think there were maybe four choices. I remember two of the choices. There's three gods or three in one. And I said, obviously, three in one. I know that. And they said, no, no, that's wrong. This is a very important point. There is only one true God. How many, how many, how many true gods are there? One. And he exists in three persons. Again, James White offers this simple description of the Trinity. This is a little bit on the technical side, uh, but it'll be the most technical thing I say today, I, I think. But it just sums it up really well. Within the one being, capital B, the one being that is God, there exists eternally three co-equal and co-eternal persons, specifically the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So here's, here's a very important uh, thing that we have just got to get in our mind. It's not one being who is three beings. It's not one person who is three persons. The one being, one God, who exists in three persons. One being, God. Three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Father is fully God. The Father is God. The Son, Jesus, is fully God. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is fully God. The Holy Spirit is God. But the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Spirit. The Spirit is not the Father. If you understand that perfectly, you probably don't. No one does. It is beyond comprehension. God, God's, God is higher than us. He is above us. His ways are higher. He, he, to him, the earth and the stars are like dust on his fingers. He is otherworldly. We're not going to pull him down and say, well, you know what? I, I, that can't be God, so I'm just going to make you how I, how I think you are. That, that's not how it works. God just is who he is, whether or not I understand. And I don't understand the Trinity. I mean, I understand some things about it. I understand this. There's one being God, and he exists eternally in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Are there three gods? Absolutely not. No. But the Father is God. Jesus is God. The Holy Spirit is God. It's amazing. It's otherworldly. Yes, yes, that's God. That, that is who he is. God is within himself a community. Just let that sink in for a minute. So we are tempted to think we're better together just because of how we are. I believe we're better together, like we're made for community because God always was a community. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. One God exists in three persons. Now, there is order in the relationship in the, uh, and the members of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father is first in authority. But, as Jesus said, the Father has shared all authority with Jesus. The Spirit draws attention to Jesus. The Spirit reminds us of everything that Jesus said and did. The Father sent the Son to us. And then Jesus prayed, towards the end of his life, the end of the book of John, Jesus prayed, Father, I'm sending them just like you sent me. And Jesus, so the Father sent the Son to earth, and Jesus sent the Spirit to us. Wow, there is this order, there is this uniqueness within the Trinity, within the three in one, and yet only one God. It's amazing. This is a very important point to know. Jesus, we, we're about ready to celebrate his birthday, but Jesus always was. So the son was not born. Jesus took on flesh and blood, and he started out as a baby. So he, he was born 
in human flesh, yes, on Christmas Day, exactly, December 25th, I don't know, I don't know when it was, really, that's the day we celebrate it, but Jesus was born as a baby, yes, he had a physical birthday, but in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, Jesus always was, because Jesus is God, when you read the Old Testament, all that stuff in the Bible before Christmas, before the first Christmas, when you read the Old Testament, you see over and over and over again how the Lord comes and talks to people. Joshua, Moses, Abraham. I believe that all or many of those times it was Jesus coming because Jesus is how we see God. That, that, is, that is the person that God has let us see, the person of the Trinity. So I believe Jesus was showing up all the time. I, I, I love the one where Joshua, who was leading the, the, God's people as they were conquering the, the promised land, Joshua sees the angel of the Lord come. The angel means messengers. The, the messenger of the Lord come. I believe that was Jesus. And he goes, Joshua goes, whose side are you on? Ours or our enemies? And he goes, I'm not on anybody's side. I'm the captain of the Lord's armies. So you can just go ahead and take off your shoes and just bow down and worship because Jesus always was. He, Jesus is God. So the divine being is one. The divine persons are three. Three in one. The truth of the Trinity, that God is three in one, that has always been the truth. But God over the centuries, has been leaving a trail of crumbs for us to, to find him, for us to see him as he really is. He's been progressively revealing who he is to us. I'm going to take you all the way back to the very first verse in the Bible. So if you have your Bible out, this would be an easy one to find. First verse in the Bible, Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning... And we're talking about the beginning of time, the beginning of earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We know God had no beginning. So we're talking about the beginning of time, the beginning of the earth, the beginning of the universe. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is why I trust what God says about how I, how I live, about uh, what happens in this life, what happens in the next life, because God created us. He created the world and all the people and everything in it. God is the creator. In the beginning, God, but I, I want to show you the breadcrumb, the, 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 the first crumbs. <laughs> in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God Ah, was hovering over the surface of the waters. Now, you might miss this one. Check this out. Then God said, then God said, let there be light, and there was light. There is someone who is called the Word of God, the living Word of God. Do you know who that is? Jesus. So here is just this, the very first hint that God is triune, that God is a trinity, God was there, God the Father, creating everything. The Holy Spirit was there, hovering over the surface of the waters, and then God spoke, God spoke, and that, that word of God is Jesus. Does it make sense? I get it. It's otherworldly, it's heavenly, it's, it's God. God was there, and then God walked and talked in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. God appeared to Abraham wrestled with Jacob, showed up in a burning bush with Moses and told him his name. The Spirit of the Lord, ah, there's another one. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Saul, David, Samson, and many others in the Old Testament for special purposes. So God is already is revealing, like there, people in the Old Testament times, they, they knew that there was an invisible God, and they also knew there was visible Yahweh. Like, Yahweh shows up sometimes, and I don't know if they could figure out how that could be, but God was slowly just revealing himself to us. But then, Jesus, Jesus comes, he took on flesh and bones, and he walked among us. One of his nicknames is God with us, Emmanuel, 
And a lot of times we talk about that at Christmas, God with us. Luke chapter 3, verse 21 to 22, is one of those places where God gave us a major glimpse of the Trinity when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist. Luke 3, 21, partway through the verse, Jesus himself was baptized, and as he was praying, the heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit, in bodily form, descended on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son. So this is the father talking. And you bring me great joy. So here we have in one setting where the Trinity shows up. Jesus is there, flesh and, flesh and bones. The, the Holy Spirit comes in a form like a dove. And the father from heaven speaks in this loud, audible voice and calls Jesus his son. That's the Trinity right there. God most fully revealed himself as three in one in the salvation and redemption of humankind, of humanity. God the Father loved you so much that he sent his only son to save you from your sin. Jesus took on human form. We sang about it today. He laid down his life on the cross for us to pay for your sin. And the Holy Spirit came to give you spiritual rebirth. That's how you are born again, is through the power of the Holy Spirit, and he's come to live inside you as your helper. One, some of the last words that Jesus said after he died, rose again, just before he ascended to heaven, what, some of the last things he said in the, in the end of the book of Matthew, the first book of the New Testament, Matthew 28, 19, these were very carefully chosen words, and he said, He's talking about a bunch of things, but right in the middle, he says, therefore, go and make what? Go and make disciples. Go and make what? Disciples or apprentices, followers of all the nations, baptizing them in the names. Is that what it says? Interesting. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, with this one phrase, I'm sure everybody was shaken up, like, what? Jesus didn't say, go baptize them in the name of Yahweh. But he mentions Yahweh. He said, go baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Jesus combined those names. And in that one phrase caused us all to look at God differently because he is revealed to us as three in one. Here's the, here's the thing that I hope you'll remember today, that God wants to reveal himself to you as your loving father, as your rescuing savior, and as the helpful Holy Spirit. God wants to reveal himself to you that way, and that's why we're looking at who is God. Not because we want to be intellectually smarter. You can be smart and not loving. What, what God really desires is that you would know him and that you would love him and that he would be such a big part of your life. Do you need a father? God is your father. Do you need a rescuer? God is your rescuer. Do you need a friend that sticks closer than a brother? God is your friend that sticks closer than a brother. Do you need a helper? God is your helper. He has revealed himself to us so that he can be a part of your life. So now you can pray to the Father in the name of the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. That changes how you pray. When you pray in the name of something, someone or if you do something in the name of someone, you are doing it in their authority. You are doing it picking up their cause. So if you notice, almost every time we pray, we end by saying, in Jesus' name, amen. So in Jesus' name, meaning we've prayed about these things. So in the authority of Jesus that he's given to us, that he's shared with us, we pray these things. We are lifting up the cause of Jesus because we believe God wants everyone healed, saved, and delivered. So as we've prayed for those things, we pray in the name of Jesus, in the authority, in the cause of Jesus, Amen. So be it. It's a very powerful thing 
So when you're born again spiritually, you become a part of a huge family. And I want to invite you to get to know your good, good father. Some of you had an absentee father. Some of you had an abusive father. And some, for some of you, the word father, it, it brings up that kind of pain. Some of you, your father has passed away, and that brings up a different kind of pain. But I want you to know, regardless of the father experience you had on earth, there is a good, good father, our heavenly father, who loves you. He proved it. He demonstrated it by sending his son to die in your place. There is a good, good father, and I want to encourage you, challenge you, urge you to get to know your good, good father. Pray to the father. He never abandons you. He never abuses you. He is always for you. He is your protector. He is your provider. And I I just want to say, if you're like me and you're a dad, God the Father is your ultimate role model. Man, if you could be the, the best father, be like the heavenly father. Be like God the Father. He gave sacrificially. He demonstrated his love. He protects. He provides. Be like that. What a great role model, but that's another message. So get to know your good, good father. Get to know your savior and your good shepherd, Jesus. He is the one who died for you. We've been singing about him today. We've been worshiping him today. He is the one who saves you, heals you, delivers you. Jesus, get to know him. Pray in his name. Do good things in his name, in the name of Jesus. And get to know the Holy Spirit get to know him. I, I, I think sometimes the Holy Spirit might operate a little bit like a dove in our lives. If you want to, to be able to actually walk up to a dove, a, a wild bird, you can't just go stomping up to him, like spitting, yelling, ah, that bird is gone. But if you just sit down You open God's word, and you just say, Holy Spirit, come. And you just be a little quiet. There he comes. He is what we mean when we say, God in you. He is in you by his Holy Spirit. And he is always with you. He is your guide. He is your comforter. He is your helper. He's your consoler when you're in sorrow. He is the presence of God that you feel when you feel God's presence in worship or prayer or or, or just when you, you sense that God is working in your life. The Holy Spirit is working in you. He is with you. So who is God? He's three in one, and he is everything that you need. He loves you so much. And he wants to be a part of your life. Would you stand to your feet? And let's, let's just wrap up this time with prayer. Would you, would you just bow your head? You don't, you don't have to close your eyes to pray. But sometimes it's nice just to shut out the distractions. Online, please don't just watch me pray, but let's pray together. So let's bow your heads. I'm, I just want to pray for you. Lord, first of all, we worship you. You are amazing. You are beyond understanding, and yet you have always been revealing yourself to us, and we are so grateful. Thank you for the revelation of who you are. And I've talked about a very complex thing today, a complicated thing, as I've talked about this aspect of who you are, three in one. Lord, I just pray that you would reveal to us, that you would open our hearts, that you would open our minds to understand and to relate to you more accurately more really, more authentically, more in in how you are and in who you are. So, Lord, I pray that not only today, but in the weeks to come, that you would reveal yourself more and more to us. Lord, we want to know you. Father, I want to know you, our good, good Father. Jesus, I want to walk with you and and accomplish your mission. Holy Spirit, I want to hear your voice. I want to hear where you're prompting me to go. There's something you, you just started talking, talking to me about this week, and I'm just waiting for you just to clarify. What, where am I going with that? What am I doing with that? Holy Spirit, come. Do that in each of our lives. 
as we come to know you more, work in our lives more, Lord. Lord, help us to not put you in a box. Help us to not say, well, you're this way because I read it online. Lord, help us to go to your word. Lord, speak to our hearts and show us who you really are. Lord, I pray that you would heal our perceptions of fathers and fatherhood. So, so many of us have painful experience with father. But Lord, I pray that you would heal that inside us. And Father, I pray that you would just wrap each person up in your strong and loving, protective arms and heal any wounds that we have regarding our Father. Lord, heal our perception of family relationships. We're seeing Father and Son in the Trinity. Wow! Help us to have a free-flowing relationship like that. Let us experience your presence, Holy Spirit. Be with us, guide us, protect us, show us, remind us what Jesus said and how it applies to the situations in our life. So all that to say, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, come in. Come in. Interact with us more, Lord. Help us to, pr to pursue you and reveal yourself to us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With your head still bowed, I just want to give you an opportunity to put your faith in Jesus to save you. There's already been one opportunity earlier in the service, but just in case you missed it, I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus. How do you do that? Turn away from your sin. Sin is everything that separates you from God. Turn your life over to Jesus and let him lead you. Become his apprentice where you spend time with him, where you work with him, where you listen to him, where, where you even imitate him because he is love and he is great. If you want to put your faith in Jesus, become a Christian today. Would you just let me know by just raising your hand? We've been raising our hand for prayer several times in the service today. If today you want to put your faith in Jesus and become a Christian, maybe you're coming back to him. Maybe you're giving your life to him for the first time online. Same thing, raise your hand to God. I would love to just coach you in a prayer. So if you are, are putting your faith in Jesus today, would you just repeat after me, but say it to God. And church, let's do it together. Let's just be supportive and, and pray this together. Jesus, I invite you into my life. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin and make me new. I choose to follow you and be your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. And we just say welcome. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Welcome to the family of God. God's got a great plan for your life. And we have some resources that we want to put into your, into your hands if you just put your faith in Jesus. And Pastor Christian will tell us a little bit more about that. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Garen. Yes, like he was saying, we have the Following Jesus course. This is our discipleship course, our discipleship pathway. So if you are new to following Jesus today or if you're newer, you just want to know, like, what are my next steps? What does it mean to be a Christian? We want to help you. We want to walk with you in that. So the first step is to just stop by the Following Jesus table. There's a big, giant banner in the corner in the lobby. Stop by that table. Um, Larry will be there if it's okay. <laughs> Larry will be there. Um, he'll get you a book and, a, um, and a, free, a free book and a free course just to set you up for success. And it's going to be great. We're going to be walking with you through that. All right. Also, if you have, um, if you filled out a Connect card, would you just put that in the, in the box on the way out? And we have to set up for this next coming week. But we're going to, it's a little bit of a different setup this week. So don't just start taking up chairs. In fact, don't take any chairs yet. Um, come see me and we'll, we'll go through, and Pastor Shelley, we'll go through what we needs to be done. All right, God bless you. We love you. We'll see you next week. Help set up if you can. Many hands make light work. that is willing to help us get ready for construction this week.
what we need to do is leave the chairs where they are, but we need to cover the first six rows of chairs 